Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Sunday and happy birthday weekend to Mr. Steve Howe. Yes, yes. And how's everybody doing out there? How's everybody doing? Cheers, cheers. Now, you guitar player guys out there, my friends out there who can play a few licks, will notice that I probably picked the easiest Steve Howe guitar part to play today. Um, yeah, it was probably the easy. Yeah, all, all I'm doing is just, and if that sounds pretty exotic, it's really not. It's a it's a C chord with a five on top, or G, and I'm just sliding that whole shape from this regular C position up to eight. spot and then we yeah, do an octave higher up here at, at uh, 13 sorry. and add the bass note right here it is the easiest Steve Howe guitar part to play and why because I didn't practice again okay so I didn't I was gonna play Starship Trooper which I played I think last year on his birthday and uh, your move out uh, you know something I don't have, I don't have time <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, Steve Howe is probably one, or no, is one of my favorite guitar players. Um, I'm going to have to say that in the world of guitar, in the world of music in general, Yes and Steve Howe are probably an acquired taste. Um, my, my family does not understand my, uh, my love of the band Yes, does not understand it at all. Yes comes on the radio and they're like, oh my god, what, what, what is this? What is it, what is this mess of sound that we're listening to? And really, that is you know there's some there's some songs where it's five guys soloing you know. It's uh, the the beginning of the album close to the edge. <laughs> Just listen to that. It's five guys soloing. Um, interestingly enough, yeah. But I mean, it's just. I, I like melodic music. I don't really care about anything about style or anything else. It just has to sound melodic. And to me, yes, sounds very melodic. Um, and, you know, when I do hook up with people that are into progressive rock, and I'm not going to say the word prog because I think that's... I, I Myself, personally, I think that means a different, different genre. But uh, progressive rock is what I grew up with, and... Um, there were a bunch of British progressive rock album uh, bands, sorry, that um, that came out uh, came out of the UK and uh, Yes, Genesis, and and Emerson, Lake and Palmer were the were the big three. Um, when people say, "Oh yeah, you're into Yes, okay, uh, what about the Genesis?" And you know, I'm not. I, I and a lot of people that I know are gonna hate me for this, but I'm not. I wasn't a big fan of of Emerson, Lake and Palmer or Genesis. Number one for Emerson, Lincoln Palmer, no guitar player. Big for me, okay? <laughs> There's no guitar player in that band. Yes, Greg Lake plays guitar, and there are guitar parts on the albums, but, you know, predominantly he played bass. Keith Emerson was the lead guitar player in the band. Yeah, he was the lead player. Um, and, uh, you know, Lake played a lot of the acoustic stuff, like Lucky Man and all that kind of thing. And in the beginning, he played a lot of acoustic, and was, but predominantly for live, he was a bass player. Um, Genesis still, um, again, people are gonna hate me for this. wasn't a big fan. I wasn't a big fan of Steve Hackett. I wasn't a real big fan of Steve Hackett. Um, Mike Rutherford was kind of all over the place. So again, not a really huge guitar solo based band. So, but I loved. I do love a lot of Genesis. You can't deny Genesis is an amazing, incredible band in the, in the history of rock. And and I do even like their popular stuff that came out in the '80s and that kind of thing. But Yes was a guitar-based band with, you know, Steve Howe at the forefront. Steve Howe influenced a lot of guitar players that I love, like um, Alex Lifeson and Rick Emmett for one. 
you know, they're all part of this double neck team because we saw, you know, Steve Howe. I don't, I think Emmett and Lifeson, even though Jimmy Page was the guy known for the double neck, I think it was more so Steve Howe with his multi neck guitars and stuff like that, that influenced Alex and Rick. This is just my opinion, by the way, guys. <laughs> you can agree or you don't have to agree. You can comment and have your own opinion on the... On, anyways. But, uh, yeah, but Steve Howe, interesting guy. Very interesting guy. He's turning 77 uh, tomorrow, Monday, April 8th. And, um... Hey, I did my research. Look at that. Um, interesting guy. Doesn't... Only travels by car on the road. Um, I'm sure he has to fly over. I mean, he's not driving over on a, or coming over on a ferry or whatever right, across the Atlantic, but I'm sure he flies over to tour, but prefers to drive himself or he, what what is called a, an attentive personal driver he probably has for after shows and stuff like that. But um, yeah, and he has some hot cars he drives around and that kind of thing too. But he and his wife pretty much travel on their own. Um, interesting. I, I remember seeing that in a Much Music um um, interview years and years ago when they're, I think when he's playing with Asia, um, that's another thing. Steve's played with a lot of different bands. Steve's played with, uh, the most notably, I would probably be Asia that had the most commercial success, uh, heat of the moment. And those, those songs, um, Asia went through a whole pile of players too. I mean, one of the greatest, on a side note here, one of the greatest singers that doesn't get enough recognition is John Wetton from Asia and, um, who sang in King Crimson and, I can't remember everybody else who he played with, but but uh, John Wetton was he in the UK? He might have been in the UK. Um, but uh, jo John Wetton, uh, incredible, incredible singer. Uh, left the band. Greg Lake was actually in Asia for a while. Then that interchangeable player thing again that we talked about. Kind of, you know, Jacob and I talked about that last week. By the way, thanks Jacob for coming on board last week for a show. But. Uh, yeah, there's an ever-changing. We talked. We talked last week. We talked about how many there was different players in that whole rainbow, Black Sabbath, Dio. Um, uh, what the hell? I don't know. I don't know. There's other bands. I can't remember them all. Michael Schenker groups got all. All these players just kind of interchange in those bands, and the same for all these progressive progressive bands. Um, Emerson Lake and Powell was uh, Cozy Powell was in Emerson Lake and Palmer. Carl Palmer was in Asia, as was John Wetton, as was <laughs> Steve Howe. Uh, Greg Lake was in Asia for a bit. Uh, Greg Lake and Steve Howe didn't like each other. Apparently, Steve Howe quit Asia at that point. Um, yeah, there was, a, and then there's a whole mess of what yes is. There is yes. There's Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, and Howe. There's uh, there's there's different incarnations of yes with trevor raven and then there's a then there is of course the yes that is still forging on okay, i could have used a different word there but they're for, forging forging on as yes without chris squire who passed away some years back um and uh they have i, I believe alan white has now passed away um so it's basically Steve Howe at the at the helm. I can't remember even who's singing for them now because John Anderson is off with Wakeman and Rabin in another band, which they they actually I think they kind of call that yes, which might not be legally allowed to be do, done, but uh, yeah, amazing. And then yes went through the you know when Steve Howe went off to Asia, yes had the nine hundred one two five album with Trevor Rabin. And then I saw a tour. Can't remember what year it was. Sorry, guys, but um, it was the Union Tour, and they had everybody—not <laughs> everybody, but a good chunk of all the people that were in Yes on the stage at the same time. They had uh, two drummers, Bill Bruford. Um, there's another guy, Bill Bruford, came from he was playing Genesis and all of UK. Uh, Bill Bruford uh, and Alan White both on stage together, uh, both drummers, two keyboard players. Um, was, Tony, was it Tony K? Oh, God. Uh, here, I didn't do my research on this, guys. Uh, Rick Wakeman, Tony K, I believe. Two guitar players, Steve Howe, Raven, Trevor Raven. One singer. Of course, there was only one singer in Yes, but even though Raven sang a lot of stuff in Yes. Um, John Anderson and the, and I saw them at Sky Dome. Uh, it was called Sky Dome back there, by the way. It was called Rogers Center. And uh, they played in the round with the spinning stage, which is a 
incredibly visual visual thing to see. But man, did it ever sound bad in that in the in the dome? And yes, is known for great sound. It sound yeah, it sounded like a broken refrigerator, man. It was it was it was bad. It was bad sound. But you know, me being a fan, I just saw saw through all that and just was blown away by the musicianship and that and Chris Squire playing a triple neck bass. It was just it was just really really special moment, even though it didn't sound good. That was a union tour, which they had an album for and everything else. But Steve, yeah, Steve is out there playing, um, plays some interesting guitars, plays, he has a, I have a book of just his guitars, just his whole collection, and uh, predominantly hollow bodies or what he, what he plays is ES-175, um, which I, I'd love to have one of those, one of these days, I played a few of them and they're just incredible guitars, um, but he, he's, he's a big hollow body guy, so he plays, you know, Super 400s, you know, big, big body guitars. Uh, in Asia, he bought. He was playing um, 335 artists, which were uh, uh, was custom built for him. 335s with two pick cards and that, and then, and of course, he's got gaggle Gibson double necks too. But um, yeah, big big time collector, big time guitar fiend, um, big ego. Unfortunately, he's got the <laughs> he's got a big ego, so that's probably why he jumps around in a lot of bands and doesn't doesn't work well, well with uh, doesn't play well with others. But uh, but I love Steve Howe. Um, say what you want about him, uh, Steve Howe is an incredible player. Um, I got a lot of licks from him. The simplicity of it all um, wasn't crazy about his tone, but man, did he could, he could play some create some crazy stuff out there. But anyways. Enough about that. Cheers to Steve, Steve Howe and his 77th birthday. Many more to Steve. Um, uh, my personal, personal, whoa, bad cable. My personal, um, you know, request or hope in life is Getty Lee joins the Yes team and tours with, with Yes. I think that would be phenomenal. Um, vocally, it's there. Uh, he'd help out with the vocals. I, he can't hit the range anymore either, but, but, uh, I remember he, do you guys remember when Yes was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Getty inducted them and Getty played with them on stage, which was just an incredible thing to see. Look that up on YouTube if you're a fan of Getty and Yes. And I forgot to mention that, you know, Rush is a Rush and Triumph. Um, if you hear it, listen, if you're fans of, well, I mean, can't deny that you haven't played listen to Rush in your life. Um, yeah, a lot of the earlier stuff and a lot of the stuff Alex plays. Um, I mean, I think Closer to the Heart was a ripoff of Starship Trooper. Um, I, I you know something I can't even play it. Uh, but anyways, uh, I was gonna try and play both of them together, but research again, guys. But anyhow, um, happy. April. It's April now. It's April now. Tomorrow, April 8th, is the total eclipse of the sun. Totality is at 318. I hope I'm around to see that because I'm always traveling around during the day driving here and there. And uh, I do have my glasses. I do have my <laughs> my total eclipse glasses. Apparently Niagara Falls is going to be a zoo tomorrow because that's where you can see it most the longest in Canada. Um, for uh, for totality, but it does come through in my town right here in Brantford, Ontario, around 3:18. But I'm gonna, hopefully I'm gonna be here to see that. Anyways, anything to show off this guitar. <laughs> Have a great Sunday. Take it easy. Uh, Bridge on Fire will be back. Um, if we don't, uh, we don't have a lot. We are doing some retooling in April. Uh, we will be back in May, beginning of May. For a bunch of shows in the area, Manny's, Nico's, and uh, End Zone in Hamilton, to be to name a few. Jacob and I have some shows though in April that I'll tell you about. April twentieth at King George in Hamilton in Hess Village, great place. Come see us there. Thank you. See you. Good night. Bye.